Tēnā katoa ki nā tangata whenua e te pukitaku haku, nā mihi nui ki a katoa. Uh, a very warm welcome everybody. We're honoured, um, I'm honoured to welcome our very special guests, Otaki MP Teresa Ngobi, MP Greg O'Connor, Kapiti Mayor, Guru and uh, Keith Maps, the new Director of CAA. <coughs> Um, the Purpose Drill Aircraft has been here for a week now. Um, it was blessed by Michael Kamato Koru Don. Um, and interestingly, at the time that he was here to do the blessing, there was a little bit of a problem. The aircraft wasn't doing quite what it was supposed to do. Um, and we were wondering when we'd be able to fly it. Um, Koru Don blessed the aircraft. And we decided to start the engine and see if it um, Turn on the engine, it's a bit different to start the car. Turn on the electric motor um, and um, the blessing of the truck. Um, and since then, the aircraft has been operating brilliantly. Um, it's been booked outside and it's done 17 hours up until this morning, um, which is a very um, heavy utilisation for, for um, one week. And we've had a couple of periods where the weather has disrupted that. So, um, very impressive, a huge interest in the aircraft. It's only here for another couple of days and then it will be going back to its base in Canterbury. We're hoping to get it back again for another round of um, extended round, round of operations so a lot more people can fly it. Um, so while it's the end of this first trial at Kapiti, um, it really is only the beginning of electric aviation locally. We know that Sounds Air is very seriously pursuing acquisition of an electric passenger aircraft, eight to ten seats, which it would be operating on the initially on the Blenheim Wellington route. Um, and I watched a video, a YouTube video last night, where they're looking very seriously at the economics in uh, Maine, in the US, uh, where there's a lot of short haul flights, short haul sectors, an hour or so. Uh, and they're looking very, very seriously at the same types of aircraft that Sounds Air is. Uh, and this presentation included some very impressive and quite startling figures on the economics of electric aviation versus hydrocarbon powered aircraft. Um, for one thing, there is virtually no fuel cost at all. But we're able to operate this aircraft here at $75 an hour, whereas our Cessna 152s are $200. So you can see there's a dramatic difference in the cost of learning to fly an aircraft like this. So with that, I'd like to hand over to our local MP, Teresa Ngoten, to say a few words. Well, I'm quite excited about Tēnā Koutou Katoa Tāna Falawa. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, Tony, and the at Aero Club uh, to be able to come along and, and see um, Reading a Hiko, I understand it's called, uh, the electric um, if Hame, it's amazing, uh, and I think uh, really uh, the timing is great given that we've just had the climate um, report come out uh, and we're wanting to be able to reduce our carbon emissions um, you know, from the 47%. So having something like this is amazing and working towards that and hearing that sounds zero interested in, in what that might look like as well. Um, and just, I want to also acknowledge, uh, as well as the Mayor, uh, Greg O'Connor, uh, the MP for Ohario. and. Greg is also the chairperson of our transport committee and select committee as well. So um, this is probably a really good opportunity, not just for us to have a look at what this looks like here in the um, in, in Kapiti, uh, but what this could potentially look like, and also uh, opportunity for us to get to know a bit more about that uh, as a select committee as well. So we're always, always looking for caucus, caucus uh, visits and opportunities. Uh, always hustling in the Otaki election, so it'll be really good if you do are able to get that back, uh, get uh, the editing of Hiko back. It'll be really cool for us to be able to come out and see what that could look like for us as well. So um, yeah, just really pleased. Uh, and, and thank you again to the Aero Club to be able to host us, host uh, Electric Air or Reading Ohiko. Um, and I guess too, uh, it was good talking about what that looks like for our community. Uh, and look, I'll just 
So the elephant in the room is obviously what's happening with Kapiti um, Airport, and we know that there's still some talks with Iwi, uh, with Kitapi Hapu and, um, and the airport owners. And while that's going through, it's still good to see that we're having, still able to have community events here like this. Um, and in terms of that community events, it is good when you talk about the re reduction of cost that that might uh, be, because it then makes sure that it's accessible for many more people, right, that are able to, um, to uptake learning how to fly. And it really truly then becomes a real community activity that everybody can participate in. So just wanted to say congratulations. Uh, fantastic to see it up close. Sorry I can't be here for the flight. Uh, my colleague's going to step in instead, Greg. Uh, so good on you, Greg. Uh, he'll do the, the <laughs> flight today. Um, make sure you take heaps of photos for us. Uh, and yeah, just thanks again, Tony, the team, the whole wider team. Um, it's really good for Carpety to see this and see us leading the way in that, in that part. So kia ora koutou. Um, Gary, the owner of the aircraft, is there? It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Kia ora. Um, thank you. It's an honour to have the dignitaries here, so thank you all for coming. It really means a lot. And um, I don't, I'm not going to talk about um, the airport as such, the elephant in the room, except to say, except to say that it, I, I just, I, I, we were just talking about it isn't a local issue as far as the aviation. Uh, community is concerned this is something that every aviator in New Zealand is really worried about and um, yeah so we're with you so when Sean talked me and twisted my arm and taught me into bringing, um, bringing our lovely little plane up here uh, that was really the thing that pushed us over the edge because uh, we want to help and then it's been overwhelming it's just the interest in it has been incredible so um, thanks thanks for having us that's what it means a lot um, so I'm going to whiz through the presentation here just to tell you a little bit more about, uh, about the aircraft and, and how we got here. Um, I think everyone knows we've got a lot of planes <laughs> flying around the world pre-COVID. It was, um, the, the estimates were quite staggering. Um, but in New Zealand, actually um, about 14% of our emissions come from uh, aviation and 7% of those are from short haul aviation. And short haul aviation is where it's really interesting at the moment for, for electrification. Um, I just wanted to tackle something that I, that I, I keep getting asked, so I've actually added this into the presentation yesterday. Um, people say, well, where's all the electricity going to come from when we electrify all our cars and our planes and all these things? Right, so just a few stats on that. So if you look at your average petrol car, the manufacturer will tell you it uses about 2.3 kilograms of CO2. And that's true as that combustion engine burning that bit of petrol and chugging out the exhaust. Um, but it doesn't take into account the fact that to refine that gallon of oil costs six, uh, six kilowatt hours. Six kilowatt hours in, in, a, in a leaf will drive you quite far. You'll, you'll get you know, probably about 80 kilometers or something. Um, and a third of the world's ships just exist to carry oil. So that's 22,000 ships every single day are just carrying oil. And we don't take that into the 2.3 kilograms. Right? And then, um, so the answer is anyway, if we stop refining oil, We'll have enough electricity to just put that directly in the car. How about the middle man? <laughs> <laughs> that's the answer. So if you get asked that, that's the answer. Uh, you may, may agree, you could answer when you're about your leaf, you could, that's a good one for you too. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not going to go on about this too much, but the big airlines, us, maybe we, we, we need to be putting the pressure on at the moment. Um, we just saw, and probably the most interesting one is that New Zealand in our climate change commission report has uh, talked about electric planes in 2030. So that's kind of the interesting thing to watch. Um, but look, it's difficult to uh, identify the big stuff. Um, yeah. uh, there are issues around weight, in particular. Um, with you know, with, you, you know, with, when you look at a, say a Tesla, um, the reason that's able to do what it can do, um, drive uh, 600 kilometres, is it's heavy. Uh, it's a lot of batteries, and that's fine. But in a plane, that's not fine. So there's a lot of developments, but um, we're not quite there yet. Um, and then we get onto the. Um, this kind of short haul size, the kind of sounds air uh, sort, of, sort of thing. And there's two things that are going on. One is that we're getting new manufacturers uh, developing lightweight composite aeroplanes, quite exciting, things like the Aviation Alice, which is an Israeli um, aircraft. And then um, the other two planes there are conversions, so that's taking a thing called a magnetic engine and converting a standing plane. And probably this one's the most interesting while we're standing here at Capital Airport because that's a Cessna caravan and they operate from here, don't they? So Sounds Air operate some of those routes. So they could take 
We know that it's completely feasible to take that aircraft that flies these um, short, say, cook straight routes, and we can electrify those, it works. Um, and then into what's happening now, uh, which is coming back to our plane, um, we're getting to this sort of small uh, general aircraft or, 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 or um, training space, really, and, and general aircraft space. And so my story was I was driving an electric car, but flying a petrol plane, and I was in renewable energy, and it just it wasn't suited, it wasn't good for my image. So I kind of set about this mission to find um, if anyone making an electric, small electric plane, two seats that we can just do training in. And on the pretext of a family holiday, we went to, <laughs> we went to Slovenia and we found this um, manufacturer called Pipistrel, um, which is where this plane comes from. And I had a flight in this thing and I was completely hooked. And I just had, we, we've got to do it. This is, it's here now. And this is, this is something, by the way, that frustrates me. Maybe it's because I've only got a small brain, right? But you often talk to people and they're like, well, we're inventing this incredible thing and it's going to, you know, hover and it's going to fly on orange peels and it's wonderful. <laughs> but it's not here, right? I want to be able to, I just, I, I want to buy a, this a leaf because it, it's, it's here and I want to get a plane that you can fly because it's actually here and certified and we can do it. I think that's very important. We can't be the nation that waits for the thing. We have to get on with it. I think they call it the Osborne effect. We're always waiting. I'm going to get that, the next phone, the next computer, the next car. Um, but we've gone and done it and we've proved, I think, in this week that the, you know, the plane's very confident. We've probably done nearly 30 flights, I think, in it so far. Um, yeah, so that's me looking smug um, <laughs> when the plane came in. Uh, just on the, just on a couple of things on costs. Um, yeah, I mean the fuel is basically nothing. It's we, you burn about 15 kilowatt hours on a flight, and that's about 15 kilowatt hours. And a kilowatt hour is about we've got someone from Meridian here, so about call it 20 cents. You know, I mean my night time is nine cents, but so it really is about three dollars for an hour's flight. Um, in fuel, and um, I've probably been a bit generous saying only $80 for one, it's probably more than that, isn't it? Fuel costs, maybe it's $100. But I'm just in, just in fuel alone, and then you've got oil and all that. But we've been staggered by uh, the, how low the maintenance has been on the plane. It really is remarkable. Um, we, we had our 100 hour service recently, the first 100 hours, and we, the, the maintenance engineers struggled to fill two hours of time. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just an inspection. And, and so the other thing which I think I went past, which is really important, and important at airports like this, is the noise. They're 70% quieter than a conventional plane, and hopefully we'll get to hear the plane flying uh, after this. It's a good neighbor. Um, yeah, so I think some of us have seen this battery pack. Um, there's a, this motor here is the equivalent of 80 horsepower, it's a 60 kilowatt. Um, and it weighs less than 20 kilograms. So it's a tiny little motor, direct drive into the propeller, and then you've just got a com uh, controller and, and some batteries to power it. And it recharges um, in an hour with the charger that we've got here, so you're ready to go. So for training flights, it means that you, um, by the time the instructor debriefs their previous pilot and has a cup of tea and goes back to the plane, it's, it's pretty much charged. Um, so we're building our infrastructure up. We've got chargers, uh, or at least, Places to plug our chargers in uh, at um, these airports now, including the Capital Coast, which is great. And the reaction, as I've said, has been has been absolutely amazing. We've heard all sorts of. This is my favourite one. This guy's a, a, a U.S. Air Force F-16 pilot, <laughs> Paco, the test pilot, and he is yeah, his best plane. Fifty-six types of planes he's rated, and this is his best plane he's ever flown. Says <laughs> <laughs> every time. You know, just a, yeah, I think we can see the that we do with Meridian every time is um, ensure that the 
Our power supply is actually certified renewable energy, which is what the clubs signed up to here. So that means we can count all those electrons as, not electrons, but we can count what we use as scope to, our scope to emissions as zero. We think we're the first plane in the world to do that. Um, last slide um, is kind of a, a subtle sales pitch to like this club and to other clubs uh, or aero schools where they've got multi fleets. Um, you start taking out some of the old high maintenance planes and, and starting to get these in. So it's the circuit basher, the one that doesn't upset the neighbours, and um, we hope we hope to see um, that kind of uptake in New Zealand soon. And that's kind of why we're doing this, uh, why we're doing this, and why we'll probably do a bit more of this actually. So. Yeah, um, thanks very much. Last thing I want to do is embarrassment. Peter. I want to thank Sean for getting us up here. Oh, thank Peter for all the organisation. Thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah. Electric yeah. cap, very rare prize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for your time. Peter, put it on. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm trained as uh, RMA Hearing Commissioner. One of the mantras that I've learned that they teach you is this. You approach any decision with an open mind, but you don't necessarily have an empty head. <laughs> <laughs> so we do come with our perceptions, but you are required to have an open mind. I say this because the current owners of the airport, Templeton Group, have publicly stated that all options are on the table. I take their word for it. I expect them to be gentlemen and gentlewomen who stand by their word. And therefore, this gathering that we have here today in terms of interfacing with what possibilities are there in the horizon, pun intended, is what it is. So we come here with an open mind. Um, that's a message also to the government officials who are here, that they can see what the potential is in this place. Do we cover this whole place with houses because there's a need for houses? Or do we have a situation where we have an operating airport with all that potential? And is there a third option of both those existing together? Given I was in... Um, I was very pleased when I read the Climate Change Commission um, Chapter 7.32. Go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes when you're speaking like this, you can just bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but what they say is, look, um, by 2030, 2035, they are looking at the electrification of short haul aviation. And the example they gave particularly was Wellington to Nelson. We have short -term. So there is an option. The other thing that I want to talk about is also the EV perspective, Tiao Maori is very important. If you ever fly over this place and you see the environment, and I know that when you're building an identity in terms of economic consumers or cultural consumers or social consumers, that the Maori worldview starts with the environment and you build that up. So there, is, there are stakeholders for the EV here to be part of a green aviation revolution. That is one of the vistas that you can see in the horizon. Whether there's an opportunity that they need to take is up to them but there is an opportunity. You have heard some of the new technologies we've been talked about. The PP, I call it PPA. <laughs> it's an, I, uh, congratulations to your hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to say that all the time, but I just thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> Although you do look like a hippie next to me, but... <laughs> 
just didn't get around to it this morning, did you? Streamlined. Streamlined. Full head ahead before it came flying. It's okay. <laughs> um, and I've got an electric Nissan Leaf. Um, I like to bring it to meet people. And one connecting factor is I charge my vehicle at the council charging with electricity supplied by Meridian. Mike, you're here? Yeah. From Meridian? There he is. And this plane is, batteries are charged by Meridian. There is a circular economy in this here, green economy, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> so with that, uh, I beg you all to have an open mind. I respect the fact that you have, you do not have an empty head. With respect to that, I ask that you have an open mind and look at what is on offer. The huge potential for Kapiti to be part of what is a national revolution, a global revolution, and it's a revolution that needs to change consumption patterns and provide us with a world that is much more sustainable than what it's been for decades, for centuries. Norera, tēnā rā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou.